Our next speaker is Mr. Stephen Ho. He is currently the general manager of operations at Wing Thai Asia, which is developmental projects in Singapore, Malaysia, and China. Previously, he was with Keppel Land International as a head of international investment and was later seconded to the newly formed Keppel Land China in Shanghai. He was responsible for developmental projects that range from high-end condominiums, grade-A commercial buildings, large-scale ta townships, and a retail mall. Prior to that, Mr. Stephen Ho was with Sabana International Consultants, where he held numerous leadership positions. His most notable roles were being appointed as the country director for the UAE and regional director of the company's operations in countries such as the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. He was also responsible for setting up Sabana's regional HQ in Abu Dhabi. We're honored that his exciting life has brought him here today to speak with us. Mr. Ho, please. Well, I'm just in time to say good morning, everyone. Five more minutes to go. Once again, a very good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the organizer for having me here today, Yaolin and Colette. I know they have been working really, really hard. Uh, it's amazing how you can actually receive email at 3 a.m. And I'm not even sure if they're expecting a response from me because uh, I typically take 24 hours before I respond. So that tells you the difference in age, you know, how energetic they are and how energetic they are I'm not. In any case, I am between lunch, so I'm trying to make sure that I don't uh, bog you down too much. I'm just going to share with you some of perhaps my interesting uh, experiences that I've kind of encountered uh, in the last 15 years. Yes, I don't look all that old, but uh, it's been a while. You know, I spent a good part of my career running around the world, as the uh, MC have introduced, trying to explain to people what a livable city is all about. And over the years, something just came to my mind. We keep talking about eco-cities, so have you ever stopped to think what this eco actually means? Does it necessarily mean ecology? Or should it be economics? So what I'm going to do with you this morning is just to share with you some teasers about what could have been, what should have been, what might have been. And it'll be very interesting for us to see uh, all the cities out there <coughs> that uh, people were trying to plan that uh, kind of fell by the wayside. I don't have a lot of big topics, but I do have a lot of pictures, so I'm going to flash them through quite quickly. You're all very smart people, you can read, so I'm not going to read the slides all for you. I'm going to show you some examples, or perhaps in concept at least. I was once involved in this project in Oman, it's called the Blue City. Uh, why blue? I did ask the developer and uh, he couldn't quite give me an answer. But in any case, he says El Sawadi means blue. So I just took it literally and said, okay, fine, it's blue. It used to be a fishing village, all 32 square kilometers of it, and they wanted to make it into a very vibrant touristy resort kind of city. It's located uh, on the northern tier of Oman, and they're quite proud to say that it's along the Indian Ocean and not so much the Arabian Gulf. And I suppose they're quite worried about the uh, Gulf of Hamas, where that becomes a bottleneck. They estimated they're going to spend some 20 billion developing it. And it's all 25 square kilometers of it. And this was what the plan looked like. Very nice. I'm not going to go through the details. I think you have seen enough details this morning. Uh, in any case, you're going to see in the slides afterwards. Very nice. And it's even got golf and resort and so on and so forth. And they figure out all the economics of it. You know, there are people coming in from Soha, from the northeast, and there are people coming in from Muscat, from the southwest, and everything's going to be fine. You know, they figure out all the planning parameters, what they have to do, it's going to be a sustainable model city, blah, 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 blah. And they've got big goals. You know, they want to develop a city more so than a resort. 
They wanted to create critical masses of activities. It's going to be diverse. It's got a unique culture, you know, based on socially responsible, sustainable development principles, and so on and so forth. They work out all the mathematics. They even have a timeline. But sad to say, this project did not take off. Right? You see, they figure out, and this is just a sampling of the entire stack of a feasibility study that was done. And the reason? They couldn't find the money. There you have it, right? And then, I spent the rest of my time running around the rest of the Middle East in Qatar. We have 200 square kilometers worth of city in Qatar. We have five square kilometers in Abu Dhabi, another six in uh, Algeria. And I was even in Casablanca. You know, the funny thing was when I went to Casablanca, in my mind, I was humming the song, Casablanca. And when I got there, it wasn't half as romantic as I thought it would be. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. All right. So there was a lot of cities that were being planned. And every one of these cities that you're seeing up there, everybody wanted to be eco. You know. But what they were not telling us is they just wanted to make money. That's where the economics come in, right? And there's another one in Abu Dhabi. This is a 20 square kilometer. And during those days, and by the way, just to let you know, this was during right up to 2009, 06 to 09. Every other developer you talk to is going to tell you, you know what? I'm developing a city. Wow. Nobody wants to talk to you about developing a project. It's always a city. And if you really want to hear something bizarre, I'm just going to share with you one example. I once met this uh, developer and he looked at me all serious. You know what? I've got a great idea. He said, yeah, please impress me, right? I'm thinking of Jurassic Park. <laughs> I said, mm, yeah, tell me more. You think I'm joking? Because I kind of gave him the blur look, you know, the totally... Yeah, I've heard all kind of funny things, but I've not heard a Jurassic Park kind of joke. And he went, you think I'm s joking? I'm serious? I said, I'm sure you are, Your Highness. Can you please tell me more? I have commissioned some scientists in Switzerland, and they have successfully cloned a prehistoric egg. Okay. I said, really? Yeah, no, no, they're halfway through. I said, okay, fine. But they did successfully clone a prehistoric plant. I say, okay. And now they're looking for dinosaur eggs and they're going to clone a dinosaur. Wow. You know. At first, I was thinking of something mechanic, you know, robots like those you see in Science Centre. But no, 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 he wanted the real thing. Right? <laughs> Do I have to go on to tell you whether the project was a success? Okay, you get the point, right? So, it was during those times that everybody had some idea about something and everything was... Eco, eco, right? Because they figured having real dinosaurs running around, that's pretty much eco, right? That's as eco as you get, right? But, uh, well, anyway, you get the point. And of course, we did a lot of other work in uh, Middle East, Abu Dhabi. You know, we do the usual work, leave, play routine. We're trying to impress them with, you know, the nice place in Singapore, all the ecology. And we did a lot of work did all the planning. And I'm going to share with you. This is a very interesting project. Uh, well, just so that you know, this version didn't take off because somebody stole this idea. And uh, in Abu Dhabi today, there's a Ferrari park. It was actually modeled after this. And so building a city is not just about whether you have the best idea. It's whether you get the right kind of support or whether the right kind of people is backing you. Right? This was actually initiated by one of the, uh, His Highnesses. Some interesting story about this. Just in case you are... You can't really see it here. But this figure of it is actually modeled after an A and a D because His Highness wanted from space to look down to see A, D. And A, D stands for Abu Dhabi, right? So that was his vision. And when we were planning out this project, it was somewhere along the line of, uh, as an initial capital, two billion US dollar. And we we're all very apologetic about it. We were like, you know, Your Highness, we try to cut the cost. It's still going to be two, 
two billion, and then he went, okay, eight days of oil revenue. That's okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, those were the days where one barrel of oil was like 100 US, right? Not now. Now it's going to take them a bit longer. Right? So as you can see, everybody wanted the G's Wiz, right? This is what you look like inside. Cool stuff, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure whether there's... Well, then the funny thing was when I subsequently, when I got to China, I realized there was this tendency of developers there to start going down this road. So I'm not sure how that's going to turn out. Nice stuff. And this was done, what, 10 years ago? 2006. Now, okay, let's back to harsh reality. What exactly is an eco city, right? After seeing all the fun stuff there. Well, I'm not going to read it out in full, but it was kind of coined back in the 70s by uh, Mr. Richard Register. And he kind of said that we must begin to build our cities, town, villages much smaller based on the human body's dimension and not just for automobiles. So that was kind of what he was talking about. And along the way, everybody had their own definition. The World Bank says that it's supposed to be well, uh, cities to enhance the well-being of citizens and society, as mentioned earlier, integrated urban planning, benefiting from ecological systems, and hopefully preserve assets for the future generations. So that's what the World Bank said. Now this is from UK's uh, IET. This is kind of a cheeky kind of definition. We all have a rough idea what it's all about. Some perfect unison of nature and technology and there's countless proposals of sci-fi utopias. You saw some of those sci-fi utopias? Yeah, you saw it earlier? Yeah, sci-fi utopias. Adorning glossy pages of architects' portfolios. But then, what's the harsh reality? How realistic these are, and who's going to pay for it? So as you go, go about planning your city, remember, keep this. always ask yourself, who's going to pay for it? Somebody has to pay for it, right? Who, who doesn't like to have a very nice, swanky new city? Well, who's going to pay for it? Now, this is a very academic kind of uh, definition. I will not bore you the details. But you're kind of seeing all the same usual explanation about eco-city. And it's always focused on the ecological part of it, not so much the economics part of it. So what exactly are the realities? Is it all about nice renderings? I think I've had an overdose of nice renderings in my lifetime. I've seen too many of this. Right? Always nice renderings. Maybe it's useful for us to just kind of talk about where we are right now. Good old Singapore. And if you think about it, what was Singapore like back in the 60s? That's what it looked like. And what were the problems then? Overcrowding? Lack of public services, mortality rates was rising, higher unemployment. The GDP back then was only, what, 2,700 Singapore dollars? And what's the GDP per capita today? 55,000 US dollars. So that's economics for you. Right? So now you kind of think about it. When you're talking about eco city, Maybe we should just take a step back and ask ourselves, what is a city? What kind of purposes or what kind of purposes a city should fulfill? What's the objective behind building those cities? I mean, it's always easy, maybe from a, oh, I should share this joke as well. Uh, I was once pitching to one of those developers and uh, he kind of told me, if you could answer my question correctly, I'll give you the job. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. Why do you think I'm developing this city? Wow, so I said, well, okay. Mm. Uh, you want to create employment, you know, boost the economy, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. One more chance. Um, because you love your country, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. I said, okay, I'm sorry. Then maybe I'm, it's not meant to be, right? And then I said, but since I'm not going to get this job, why don't you tell me what's your answer? My friend because my ego is as big as it. Now, even if I knew that answer, do you think I would have said it? 
But subsequently, I kind of, you know, console myself. Perhaps I should have told him, you mean your ego is only that big? <laughs> anyway, okay. So if you talk about Singapore, it's really a small place. We, have, we don't have a lot of stuff, actually. You know, we have human beings and that's about it. So how do we all bring it together? We do need to have a plan. Right? I think everybody knows that Singapore is very well planned. Every inch of it is being planned. But there are challenges that we have to think about. And so these are those challenges that similarly you have to think about as you go about doing your case. What kind of problems are you trying to solve? Do not try to solve a problem that's not even there in the first place. Right? Especially when it has to deal with ego. And for all you know, a lot of times when people are doing something they might be not doing it for the right reasons or suboptimal reasons for that matter. Right? These are some very important questions that need to be asked. It was asked for Singapore. So in your case, in your case, you have to ask yourself, what kind of questions are you trying to answer? I, I don't suppose I have to read these, right? Because probably you have read it twice already, right? And of course, you need to worry about the technicalities of it. I think it was again mentioned by previous speakers. How do you want to make use of the land that is available? How are we going to distribute them? But probably that's not what you need to think about in your case because uh, we don't expect all of you to be master planners. But it's important for you to think, given that piece of land, what are you going to do on it? People have to live there. Businesses have to operate. You have to attract investments. You need to have roads, so on and so forth. So you need to have a certain sense of practicality built into your plan. I mean, it's always well and good to talk about big things, right? Like the one I showed you earlier about sci-fi. But you really have to think hard and deep. What exactly are you trying to solve? Is it an unemployment issue? Is it a housing issue? Infrastructure issue? Economic issue? Those are the things that you really want to think about. I'm just going to run through quite quickly some of those other fun stuff that I used to do. Uh, we were actually helping the Qatari government again to think through some of those issues and look at the size of their city. What, two times, three times the size of Singapore, right? But the issues that they were concerned about is the same. Population growth, housing population, the economics, employment creation. And how do you have, as mentioned earlier, Balancing growth, diversification, and social safety. Right, I'm not going to bore you with the details. You really have to think about how to make, use, make the best of those pieces of land that you have. From industry standpoint, service, so on and so forth. Again, it's not just about nice rendering. You really have to create spaces for businesses. For recreation for culture, and very importantly, how do you create buy-ins? How do you make sure that people can believe in your plan? So as a consultant presenting to the Chongqing local government, how do you present to them? What story are you going to tell? Why should they believe you? I mean, there are tons and tons of uh, proposals that's being processed. Why is yours special? Sri Lanka, and I think, as mentioned earlier, you really need to have some institution structure set in. It's not just about a plan on paper. How do you implement those plans? So these are some of the things that you might want to think about. It's always good to think about the what to do, but at the same time, you have to think about how to do it and when are you going to get it done. A lot of times, the plans always get stuck at the what to do. Oh, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do this, it's all nice and well. How are you going to do it? Okay, I'm going to jump through some of this. I think you've seen enough renderings for a day. Or even in Africa, if you can't think about it, they have clear objectives. They want to create a more diversified economy, better trained manpower, good housing, new business and employment opportunities, clean and green environment, good and efficient infrastructure. So all these are the basic foundation of a city. So before you get too hung up on the eco-city part, you really ask yourself, what is a city all about? What happens in a city? 
and how are you going to do something about it to make sure that it's efficient and it meets all these criteria that we're talking about. It never runs away from businesses, investments, job creation, and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm just going to run through. So as I mentioned earlier, you really have to ask yourself, what are the challenges facing a city? Not so much an eco-city to begin with, a city. And these are some examples you can kind of think about. It's not exhaustive. I think these are well-known issues facing cities. Now then you might want to ask yourself, what makes a city great? So it's one thing to have a city, plan for it, try to implement it, and afterwards, how do you make it sustainable? Sustainable not so much as from the eco standpoint, but sustainable as a city where people want to be at, businesses want to invest in, and then it's going to go on for a long time. I think Singapore keeps thinking about this issue. We have reached SG50. Are we going to reach SG100? Where will we be? I won't be around for sure. You guys would be. SG100, what's going to happen then? You can have all kinds of benchmarking. That's fine. Right? I think this is for Sydney. Different kind of benchmarking. They can set all kinds of targets, ecological or otherwise. Likewise, Singapore had its own set of long list of targets. So these are some of the things that you can think about in your case. What kind of parameters, what kind of KPI, key performance indicators? Some examples for you to think about. So it's very important that you have certain objectives in mind. Don't just jump into the case and start thinking, oh, I'm going to design this perfect utopian kind of city. <clears throat> As in all things, ask yourself, what exactly are you trying to solve? You can set all kinds of targets, that's well and good, but how are we going to achieve it? And of course, if you are like a sci-fi fan like myself, I was trained as an engineer, you can always try to impress people with all kinds of ecological jizwis. But as I mentioned earlier, is that really the crux of the issue? So ask yourself, eco, what does it stand for, for you and your team? Because technology, they are plentiful out there. Right? So try not to make your case into a whole you know, sci-fi, technological kind of proposal. Because that is just a means to an end. That's not the end by itself. Yeah, you can do all those stuff, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Should I bore you with more? I think you get the idea, right? So what are the realities in China as you go about, because your case is about China? I think we, oops. I think uh, this whole chunk of words there, it's well and good that the plan was being announced. You want to move 100 million country dwellers into cities in the next six years. How many times that Singapore population? 20 times. How long did Singapore take to become what we are today? 50 years. So my maths is not all that great, but you can work out the mathematics, right? So the question is, how are you going to do it? Right. Of course, China has been encouraging eco-cities for the longest time. But as you can see from the second paragraph, the concept is still quite vague. What exactly does it mean? I think the key point that the Chinese government have always been pushing for is to build cities on non, once polluted or non-arable land. China is facing a shortage in arable land. Arable land means land that you can use to plant crops. So the last thing that they want is to use up more of those to build houses. Right, so if you can come up with a model that says, okay, like in the case of Tianjin Eco City, built on once wasteland, so, you know, uh, land with no water, and you can make that work, then that becomes a very replicable uh, model. But the reality is always this. Can they get finished in time? Can they work?
But you know what the reality is? If coal is still so cheap, then the reality is not many people will be very prepared to use green energy, right? If I were to tell you that to charge your iPhone, it's going to cost your parents three times the utility bills, what do you think you're going to do? You're not going to do it, right? So that's the reality. Is that something you want to think about? I'm not saying that ecology is not important, but I think what the point I'm trying to make to you is think behind, think deeper, and ask yourself the economics, whether it's going to work. I think just to quote uh, Mr. Ho Tong Yen, former CEO of uh, Tianjin Eco City, it must be commercially viable. It should not be an expensive project that is funded through government subsidies. As mentioned by earlier speaker, you realise that if you have to go Dutch or you can't figure out who's going to pay for it, then something's going to happen or something's not going to happen. Okay, I'm going to skip this. You can read it on your own. So finally, the last two slides. So what are likely to help you succeed in China as you go about planning your eco-city? Just remember the few key points. You need support from the central government. As mentioned earlier, local government have limited resources and even converting land use comes from central government. They only get a certain quota every year. If they don't get it this year, they have to wait for another year. So you do need central support. And the Chinese government, the central government, is actually encouraging a lot of experimentation. In fact, a lot of policies at the national level takes place after the local government have done the experimentation. And the central government, seeing that it works, they might just adopt it and then push it nationwide. And if they can see that it's going to work, they will support you more. So again, whatever proposals that you're putting on the table, it must be something that is replicable across China and not just uniquely Chongqing. Right, so there's a key point that you want to bear in mind. And my pet topic, anything that stresses economic growth is going to work. Anything that's not, chances are, you know, it's going to be hamstrung. And don't propose sci-fi eco features. It has to be economically sound because nobody's going to help you build it. You know, nobody's going to help you pay for it if it's not going to be commercially viable. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, you need to think about the institutions that you need to run the city. And with that, thank you very much for your time.